Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. So now let's talk about all of these billionaires that are investing into silver. These are the smartest, wealthiest, most successful people in the world. And they all have one thing in common, which is purchasing silver. I don't think that's ironic. We're talking about people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Thomas Kaplan. We're talking about people like Jim Rogers, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, that billionaire from Texas that bought $50 million worth of silver from Andy Sheckman or Miles Franklin, which by the way, if you guys want to purchase from them, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com, let them know Silver Slayer sent you, just had to throw that in there. But the whole point is a lot of people that own billions of dollars buy silver, even the Hunt brothers in 1980. Well, four hours ago, an article came out titled, Brevin and Howard plans $750 million push into commodities trading. Another example, these are billionaires going into commodities. Do you think this is ironic? No. Do you think it's ironic that all these billionaires invest into silver? No. It's not. And there's many more than just the ones that I mentioned. There's many more. But I want to cover some of this because they make some good points. The rich and the powerful are the largest holders of silver. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Thomas Kaplan have all made fortunes investing into silver, with Buffett making a cool $97 million so far. Thomas Kaplan crediting silver to what made him a billionaire, stating silver is gold on steroids. And that's what I also mentioned. By the way, Warren Buffett bought 3,500 tons of silver in 1997. That equates to 130 million ounces of silver. This stuff was in 1997, 1998, though. What about nowadays? Jim Rogers in 2021 says he's buying more gold and silver. So it's not just past tense. This is present tense. Actually, even more recent, December 2022, Elon Musk is set to buy his own silver mine and bid to solve biggest weakness. His biggest weakness is not having enough silver since silver is used in electric vehicles and solar panels and uh, space equipment. All three of Elon Musk's companies, Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City. Elon Musk needs silver like nobody else. And if he doesn't have a direct source, he's screwed. Well, he said, I'll, instead of just finding a direct source from somebody else, I will be the source buying a silver mine. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, so anyways, this article that came out four hours ago is extremely interesting. And it sparked this, this entire this entire idea of more people buying silver that have billions of dollars to do so and what that would do to the market. I mean, even people like Jamie Dimon, that is the CEO of JP Morgan that has been manipulating the price of silver for several decades. And you guys know the rest of that. It's called spoofing, where people place false buy or sell orders on these exchanges essentially just manipulating people, uh, other people's, uh, uh, I guess, perceptions of what the market's really doing. So then JP Morgan traders are influencing those people to do what they want and they cash out from it. Two of their employees got sent to prison for this this year. They paid a $920 million fine. You know, th th this isn't just some conspiracy. People have gotten caught doing this. So before we jump into this article, Make sure you subscribe if you like daily silver stacking videos. I'm always going to give you the newest, latest, freshest, most up-to-date, recent information in the world of precious metals, more specifically silver. And I'm currently doing a silver giveaway, a massive giveaway. Links in the description made luckiest stacker win. So silver's rich history dates back over 5,000 years ago. The prosperous civilization of summer, Sumeria, is considered 
the first known human civilization. And it's no coincidence that they were the first to recognize silver's value. The wealth of Sumerian kings were measured by the amount of silver they had. And for nearly three centuries, the international monetary system was based on silver. Around the world, collectors, investors, governments, central banks have an affinity for silver. The rich and the powerful are the largest holders of silver, including Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Thomas Kaplan have all made fortunes investing in silver, with Buffett making a cool $97 million so far. Thomas Kaplan crediting silver to what made him a billionaire, stating silver is gold on steroids. Why does he say gold on steroids? That's also what I say. I thought I came up with that term, um, but I guess someone else did first. Um, but, and I promise I've never heard anyone else say that when I made it up. And I say that for two different reasons, actually. And the, the second reason, I don't think people even understand or, or didn't intend to say it from. So I call silver gold on steroids because it is a more exaggerated, more dramatic, more extreme, more volatile, more risky version of gold. Gold is pretty safe. If gold's going to rise 5%, Silver's going to take it the next level and rise 15%. So, you know, it's steroids. You're buffed up. But one thing about steroids is it also has negative side effects. If gold's going to drop 5%, silver's going to drop 10 15%. So you see how it's riskier? And that's because the silver market is so much smaller than gold's. And that's why people try to manipulate the silver market, not the gold market, because it's much easier to manipulate. I don't think a lot of people, when they say gold on steroids, they are also meaning the negative side effects of steroids like I do. Regardless, though, you know, silver does have a lot more potential for obvious reasons. If you watch my channel or anything like my channel, you understand why silver has so much more potential than gold. So the growth potential of silver, there we go. Many investors question why they should own silver if they already have gold in their portfolio. There's a huge reason, several reasons. True diversification is a blend of investments with variation within individual investment classes. Silver offers many of the same benefits as gold. It serves as a store of value, has historically been an excellent hedge against inflation, liquidity, uh, not seen in other safe investments like bonds or CDs or real estate. However, where silver truly shines is its growth potential. The exponential growth comes down to three main things. Silver is more divisible than gold. Silver is more affordable than gold. And silver plays a critical role in modern industry. Gold has some benefits. Gold can, um, you know, you could fit $100,000 of gold in a shoebox. You can't do that with silver. So if you're talking about people like Jim Rogers, like Warren Buffett, then you want gold as well. Um, but where silver really shines is where gold doesn't. Where gold shines, silver also does. Silver is money as gold is. Money is something that cannot be created nor destroyed. Gold and silver. Silver is the best of both worlds. Gold only has one world, which is money. Silver is money and industry. There's a silver shortage as well as silver is needed, like they mentioned. Plus, silver is more affordable. Most people get into silver probably coming or researching into gold first and they hear about this more affordable, more opportunistic metal, which is silver. So silver's demand does not stop at collectors where gold does. Retail investors, major banks, world governments. Silver's a modern day industry essential. In fact, silver is 
the second most widely used commodity, only being outranked by oil. It plays critical roles in many sectors, including but not limited to electronics, jewelry, alternative energy. Let's back up real quick and look at this. Silver is, in fact, the second most widely used commodity. Let's look at this article right here. Brevin Howard plans to spend $750 million into commodities. Which commodity do you think makes the most sense for them? Especially when you read this article. So let's read this article. There's very important words in here. Brevin Howard Asset Management is building out a team to trade commodities as the macro hedge fund group diversifies its business. If you guys don't know, I was a special guest on the Rich Dad Poor Dad podcast. Robert Kiyosaki, the famous author of the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, has a podcast with 3 million subscribers. I was a special guest. Just me and Robert Kiyosaki talking. Uh, go check out that, that episode. It's titled The Number One Asset Everyone Can Afford. Just type that in. Uh, type in Robert Kiyosaki, Number One Asset Everyone Can Afford. The video will pop up. It has like over half a million views. But when Robert and I were talking, he was mentioning a lot of the micro Right, a lot of hedge against inflation, how the system is corrupt, the dollar is basically worthless. But then I took it to the macro side. I started talking about industry. I started talking about silver's uses, the importance, scarcity, supply deficits, above ground de demand versus below ground supply, the gold to silver ratio, silver's true role in why silver will take on a life of its own. I started going this way, and he stops and he says, so you're telling me not only does silver have so much potential because of the monetary system, the inflation part of things, but also because it's so scarce and the fundamentals are so out of place, low supply, high demand pushes. And I said, yeah. And then the next day he tweeted about the macro, <laughs> uh, you know, referring to our podcast. Um, but it's very important. It's a very important word. Uh, so the team is likely going to allocation of about 750 million, but the details are private. Um, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was very interesting. So let's go back to this. The future, I talked about that when I was mentioning Elon Musk, you know, solar panels, which are photovoltaics, right, PV cells, everything, colloidal silver in the medical world, silver's in everything. After all said and done, no one can deny it. big banks tend to end up on the right side of the market, and big banks are buying silver. JP Morgan, the largest investment bank in the world, now owns the largest hoard of physical silver in history. J.P. Morgan started buying silver in 2011. Hmm, that's right when silver hit $50. And as of this time, has then acquired $5 billion of physical silver, over 200 million ounces. This begs the question, would you bet against the largest investment bank in the world when they have $5 billion on the line? Think about that. If all the smartest, most successful investors in the world are buying silver, why wouldn't you? Would you bet against them? Do you think they know something that the common man doesn't? Yes. Would you rather be on their side or bet against them if they're the ones that are the most successful? Jim Rogers. Right. We're talking about Bill Gates, folks. We're talking about Warren Buffett. We're talking about people that never lose in life why would you not join their side when you know they know something that nobody else does stuff is very interesting so i want to go a little bit into this gold on steroids part because i want to see if he mentions 
the part that I'm mentioning. I haven't read this part, but regardless, it is very important to understand why silver is gold on steroids, especially for someone newer. So Buffett's vote of confidence restored the perception of silver as a viable investment. And I do think that will happen as more billionaires get into silver. As, you know, think of Elon Musk. If people found out Elon Musk started buying silver or buying a silver mine, even when Elon tweeted out four letters, it shot those four letters up thousands of percent. He, he tweeted out D-O-G-E, which is Dogecoin. It's a meme cryptocurrency. It was a meme. It was worth like point zero 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 one pennies. Like, he shot that coin up thousands of percent just from tweeting that. Imagine if people found out he was investing in the silver. He's not going to mention it, but he did hint towards it on a podcast um, that I covered before he hinted towards it he's hinted towards it but you know even before that he's mentioned buying gold mike maloney wrote a personal letter to elon musk telling him to buy physical silver david morgan did as well so from that moment on when he's talking about Buffett's vote of confidence restoring perception from that moment on i never had to explain to people the rationale for owning silver Kaplan said on the Nova Gold Call, referring to the metal having many industrial uses and serving as a store of value, right? The best of both worlds. The fact that it has both components means that it's gold on steroids. Buffett's endorsement of silver also enabled Apex to list its shares successfully. Um, so uh, the billionaire credits some success to Buffett, so he's talking about, you know, Thomas Kaplan becoming a billionaire from Warren Buffett. So silver could surge again. Precious metals are poised for another historic rally as investors seek to safeguard their wealth from this pandemic. Buffett took his positions at $4, $4.50, and silver ultimately went back to 50 You're going to see something not dissimilar once again. Silver is very much in gold. So, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to highlight the main points you guys know me I tried to I don't like to beat around the bush I don't like talking about the stuff you don't need to know I try to talk about the stuff you need to know I think that's what a lot of youtubers do wrong they don't understand that people don't care about what you ate for dinner last or you know last night or you, you they, they don't so confiscation very interesting word when you're talking about silver. I've talked about silver confiscation. This should be a separate video since this video is talking about billionaires investing to silver, but since we're already on this paragraph, why not get into it a little bit? Let's tease this thought. Do you think that your silver could ever be confiscated? Last time we saw real legal confiscation was the executive order 6102 from FDR 1930 or 1933 here he goes talking about it right here uh well actually this is the second one FDR said you all your gold in your safe it's not yours anymore it's owned by the federal reserve and if you don't turn it in you will pay a $10,000 fine, 10,000 imprisonment, or both. Think about that. Imagine a, new, uh, an, uh, a newspaper article coming out telling you that all your silver isn't yours anymore. You have to turn it in or you'll go to prison for 10 years or pay a $10,000 fine. And in 1933, that's what, hundreds of thousands of dollars today. Would you turn it in or would you play Russian roulette and kind of, you know, dig it in the hole 20 feet in your backyard. Like, what would you do? Well, today, every time people, countries uh, have confiscated people's gold, it's, in, it's during economic turmoil or war. Wow, we're facing both of those things right now. 
but silver, I think, wouldn't be for that reason. It would be more because we need so much silver to go green, and we don't have enough silver to go green. Um, and if you think we do, then you're living in la-la land, as someone else said in the article I covered. Um, but that that would probably be the reason, because recycling will put a dent in it. Even uh, trying to confiscate ours, I don't think, would work. Mining innovation in the Earth's crust, um, or... What else could we do? Space mining, which, yeah, it's a real thing. They're trying to, at least. If you don't believe me, there's an asteroid called Psyche 16 headed towards Earth in the year 2026. They say it has up to $500 quintillion worth of precious metals on it. NASA sent out a, ash, uh, uh, they sent out a rover last year to check this thing out. I don't think we'll be able to mine it within the next three years, but they are already... You know they're 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 teasing this 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 situation. I think eventually we will, but just not now. Uh, but anyways, uh, I guess I'll wrap this video up here. I don't want to go too off topic, um, but I do think this is this is good stuff, and I think that if you're buying silver and all these other rich successful billionaires are then you're doing something right i'm gonna uh yeah i'll pass the question to you what do you think about this stuff um i also think that i am probably going to be one of those people that really tries to push those into not only silver but a little bit into gold if you are someone buying hundreds of thousands of dollars i'm talking hundreds of thousands because storage is a real thing plus gold is also a safe haven you know you there is only really one thing that gold has going for it and it's that you could fit a lot of it in a small space you know you, you could fit it like I said a hundred thousand even more than a hundred thousand dollars of gold in a shoebox silver that would take up a lot of space um, and when you're talking about something that you have to hide discreetly that could be a problem and I don't recommend safety deposit boxes and I don't recommend you holding it in a vault if I, I always say this if you can't hold it you don't own it so yeah um, if you wanted to purchase some of the shiny stuff, like I said earlier, go to Miles Franklin. They're the people that filled that $50 million order from that billionaire in Texas. Andy Sheckman's the CEO. He pulled that off in two days. 900,000 eagles, over 100,000 ounces in junk silver and gold. One of the only few people that could still work with the U.S. Mint. Since the U.S. Mint banned everyone from buying directly from them last year, that speaks for itself, right? Very reputable, respected company. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Also, make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. And, uh, yeah, I'm posting daily videos and also doing lots of giveaways. So you should also subscribe for that reason. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.